when doing the conversion, should we um, use the first one or the second one usually? For the what conversion? This conversion. What does it tell you to do? It says calculate the amount of energy required to remove the second oh, electron. Second. So you're going to oh, yeah, remove the second, yeah. You guys doing okay over here? Yeah. Okay. Look at you. Look at all those problems. Good for you. Electrons are like to propel each other, so the electrons are going to be farther and spread out. Good morning, YouTube. I hope you had a wonderful week. It was a more exhausting week for me. You could probably hear in my voice. I'm still a little sick. Thank you for all the well wishes last week. I, I really appreciate you reaching out to me and saying that you hope I feel better. Um, I am feeling better, but it has definitely kind of been hard. It's been a long road. Um, having the flu is just debilitating. So it was it was a rough week, but I am feeling much better. So thank you. And I thought, you know, one of the things I taught this week for my turnkey classes was 10 ways to ditch those worksheets. And so I thought this would be a good week to reintroduce another strategy for ditching a worksheet. About three or four weeks ago, I talked about task lists. So today I wanted to talk about task cards. In my honors class, we are reviewing our unit on periodic trends. They have a test on Monday. So I've taken all of my review guides that I've done, and instead of taking them and putting them on a piece of paper, instead I create these cards out of the questions. And you may say, why do you do that? Why, why does that why is that a good thing? Um, and, and really, it, it comes down to two major things. First of all, students spend a lot of time answering questions that they already know how to answer. And it's almost like kind of silly for them to be answering these questions because they feel comfortable with that information already. So I feel like students should not be answering a million questions on a particular topic because then it just becomes busy work, right? So that's really reason number one. Reason number two is the act of actually having like a card that the student can pick up and take to like, let's say where they're sitting or, you know, take to their friend just makes it a little bit more of a conversation as opposed to everybody looking at their paper and working through the questions. I find that the students being able to actually take this and be mobile with it just allows for better communication and the students are able to help each other more easily. So that's really the major reasons behind it. And then of course, differentiation is huge. So in these task cards, it's built right in. So my students can take cards that they don't know how to do. They can take challenges cards that I have available. It really just makes sure that all students are engaged and any students that need that review, they can review. Any students that need that extra engagement, maybe extension topics, they have that there as well. So that is the reason why I do task cards all the time now with reviews because my students enjoy it. They are really into it and the engagement is just absolutely through the roof. Now the other thing that I do whenever I'm reviewing for an assessment is I don't just have like one set of cards. Instead, you'll see that I actually have multiple sets. So I have like pink cards, for example, and then I also have a set of purple cards, for example. So what are these cards? Well, basically the colors correspond to the topics that the students have learned about. So I group the topics. Now I group them according to atomic and ionic radii. I grouped it in terms of ionization energy, and then I also grouped it into um, parts of the periodic table. So what I have the students do to incorporate some metacognition, I like the students to reflect on their comfort level with answering questions. So I hand them a sheet like this, which kind of looks similar to like a review guide of some, some sort. But then you'll notice here, this is where I have the students reflect on their concept knowledge. So if we look here, I have them, I say you have to complete at least 10 cards, but I have them use a scale of one to three to uh, use one to identify the topic that they need the most help with or feel the least comfortable answering questions about. And then three would represent the topic that they feel the most comfortable answering questions about. And then I encourage them, you know, if you chose one for ionization energy, you want to make sure that you do the pink cards today. You don't have to do all the pink cards, but I would say, you know, spend the bulk of the time with the pink cards so you can make sure that you feel comfortable. I want to make sure that they spend time answering questions that they don't know how to answer so that when it comes time for test day, then they feel more comfortable answering those questions. And then the other thing that I try to do to make it a little bit easier for students to check their answers and make sure that they're comfortable with those answers is you'll notice inside the box, 
So once the t I take the task cards out, I actually have a QR code. So the students can scan the QR code and that will take them to the answer key so that they're able to see what the answers are to the task cards. So this is, like I said, my favorite way to review for assessments just because it provides such a large library of questions and students can pick and choose what they need. And their feedback has always been very positive. I've been doing this for, I would probably say the last like four years and the students love it and I love it too because I feel like I can help every single student and engage every single student by doing something like this. So if you have any other uses for task cards that you do, like I said, this is one way to ditch that worksheet. This is something that I incorporate for every unit review, but you could absolutely incorporate this into like a daily practice, you know, and if you laminate it, put it in a box, you can use it year after year. So I hope you're doing well. I hope you are excited for the Thanksgiving holiday. I know I am. As always, I welcome your feedback on this video. I hope you found it valuable please leave a comment down below. Maybe share how you use task cards in your class. If you find this strategy helpful, I'd also love to know. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your weekend and I'll be sure to check in with you guys next week.